Welcome to the Edward White Audio Thoughts. In today's episode, I speak to a guy called George Scully. He is a 20-year-old based in London, and he holds the world record for the most amount of Rubik's Cubes solved in a 24-hour time period. In today's episode, we talk about lots of different things from the mindset to breaking the world record, how we sort of trained for it, how he learns cognitively to speed up his movements how repetition has helped him and how it's sort of spread through into his wider life i really really enjoyed recording this episode um came away with loads of ideas personally so i hope that you enjoy it too and i'm sure you're going to get lots from it enjoy the episode welcome to the edward white audio thoughts can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and tell the audience a little bit about yourself yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, my name's George Scully. I'm 20 years old. I'm currently just a student at university, but I'm also uh, the one of the fastest Rubik's Cube solvers in the UK uh, slash the, the world, I guess. Um, I recently set the world record for the most uh, Rubik's Cube solved in 24 hours, uh, 6,931, um, which was pretty tough. Uh, and then I'm also the, the, the UK champion and I've held a few national records here and there. Um, so yeah, just I really enjoy yeah, solving Rubik's Cube fast. It's a very, very niche hobby, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's my thing. That's my thing. <laughs> so um, what's your personal record for solving one Rubik's Cube? So yeah, so like when we talk about like the three by three, that's like the regular, yeah. you know, cube nine, six on each side. My personal best for that, I've had it for a long time now. I haven't beaten it in about three, almost four years. Um, but it's uh, 3.31 seconds. 3.31. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, like, the world record single is 3.47, but yeah. it needs to be done in, in competition for it to count. So, uh, yeah, oh, maybe okay. one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, yeah for, now, uh, for now, I haven't done it in comp yet. But, yeah, like, I've, I've got a few solves at sub 3.47. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how, how do you train to do it that quickly? Like, it's just insane yeah. that you can just move it yeah, that like, quickly. Yeah. Going from like, yeah, you know, one minute, mm. two minutes down to, you know, six seconds on average. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, so like the main thing really is like, w w like when you solve Rubik's Cube, the main things that are causing you to solve it is you're using these things called algorithms, which are these sets of moves that are going to temporarily mix it up, then put it back up and switch to a few pieces. Um, so like just to solve it, you only need to know like four or five. Mm. Um, then over the years, I've learned like, like over a thousand or so. Um, they're like these sets of moves and they kind of get in your muscle memory. So like, for example, like an algorithm that was like a uh, 12, 15 move algorithm. Yeah. And it swapped those two, like just two pieces on yeah. or, like two corners and two edges. Okay. Um, so like you learn these algorithms that are moving around these very specific pieces that you want to be moved around. Mm. So they solve, so they solve into particular places on the cube. Okay. Um, essentially that's it. Obviously also turning speed, as you can see, that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. Algorithm, the, the faster you turn. Um, the better. So, like, this is a probably algorithm, and like, if you want to be able to execute that, you know, in at least you yeah. know, less than 0.8 seconds. You know? <laughs> um, so, like, turning speed is very important. I think it's kind of luck of the draw potentially. People can train to obviously get faster at turning mm. than you do over time, but there's a, definitely a certain like kind of threshold. Um, I think I was just quite lucky. My mm. my dexterity is okay, and I can turn fairly well. Mm. Um, that's just always been that's always been kind of what's been able to carry myself through. Like, I can turn at a decent speed, um, and like, obviously, like ergonomics are a big part of it right like making sure like you're like you don't have to re-grip dur dur during the execution of an algorithm like making sure i don't have to like turn my wrist a certain way and stuff like that there's a lot that goes into it a lot of like these little idiosyncrasies that like ensure you're going to be faster um but yeah i mean like yeah essentially just learning algorithms turning fast and practice thousands and thousands and thousands of souls <laughs> but yeah that, 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 that's what got me here so do you do you train your hands or your arms in any way to do uh, it faster I, I don't i mean maybe i should but no i <laughs> I, I train them just by doing solves yeah uh, okay yeah, like doing solves essentially makes makes you better mm. uh and like sometimes like doing slow solving like turning like obviously slow like mm. like on purpose purposefully slow um you kind of might be noticing oh actually this might be a better way to kind of finger trick that's what we call it finger tricks yeah um to, like to execute this certain algorithm um, so that's a big part of it as well. But yeah, there's, there's a lot, like I said, that goes into it. But yeah, I mean, like, mainly it's just from, I don't have any, like, sort of training procedures. I just kind of drill them. Often mm. you'll do, like, this thing where, like, you have, like, a, a timer mm. and you're, like, practice, try, trying to get down your time, like, trying to get, like, oh, I want to, I want to be able to execute this algorithm in 0.6 rather than 0.7. You know? Okay. So um, you set so out the, the 
like yeah, you so just I, had I, there. I won't even pick up. I'll just like say, okay, I want to execute this algorithm in 0.6. Yeah. And I'll just like do it over and over and over. Uh, until, okay, like, so you literally just repeat it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Like, so I remember, like, there's one certain finger trick, like I said, as we call it, which yeah. is like doing something we call a D2. So doing the bottom two layers mm. and doing it as like one movement, like a double flick, as opposed to. Oh. Kind of, uh, rather, rather than using one finger, using two fingers. Yeah. You obviously want to use that um, for like every side. Yeah. But for that, I remember like I couldn't do it. I think like, maybe because I was young and my hands were too physically small. Please. But what yeah, I, did, yeah. I, did, I just sat in front of the TV for like two hours and just tried <laughs> to do it until I could do it. Yeah. Um, so, like sometimes, yeah, I guess I guess that in a way was training. Um, mm. for, but uh, but yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so like you said, like how how do you find yourself? Um, doing stuff over and over again do you, do you get bored or do you have a way that you kind of yeah i, I think like the important thing to, to 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 kind of regard with the rubik's cube is that it's not boring i, I don't think I, no, I, no, no. I think it's it's easy to not find it boring because the cube has 43 quintillion combinations 43 yeah. then 19 zeros that means every single time i scramble it mm. i'm gonna get i'm gonna have a different solution i'm gonna be seeing something new every single time i solve mm. Um, so that's why I don't get bored. Yeah, maybe in terms of this finger trick stuff, yeah, that could be a little repetitive, I must yeah. admit. Um, like that's why you kind of like the main way you get better is through doing just solves repetitive, mm. um, which is, isn't boring. And obviously, there also there are eighteen different official events that you compete in, right? Okay. So, uh, so it means that like you know, if you, if I get bored of three by three, I'll move on to four by four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four by five. Is it, four it, by are those ones harder? So there is the two by two exists, which is yeah. only four on each side rather than nine. Yeah, that's easier. So I have been as a record for that one. That's uh, 1.57 seconds on average, <laughs> um, which, is, which is okay. I mean, I'm hoping to get less than 1.5 in the future. That's kind of why I am now. But mm. like, still, yeah, yeah. Like, so like that, that's obviously a bit easier, right? Mm. <laughs> um, and then when you move on to 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, 7x7 is all the way what it goes up to Yeah. Um, in, in like official competitions. Mm. Uh, yeah, they, I'd say they get harder. You run into these things called like parities, which are quite hard to explain. Um, but essentially it just means you might be having to like, like 50% of the time you, you'll get slightly unlucky and have to execute like this 40 move algorithm that like means you have to like solve it in a certain way. It's like, essentially just means it's harder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you, like you run into a couple problems, but yeah, once you've got those out of the way, the exact same like mindset is applied to a seven by seven as is a five by five. Mm. So like to, if you can solve a five by five, you can solve a seven by seven. Mm. You can therefore solve a twenty-one by twenty-one if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. And um, it'll just be more. It'll just just be more time-consuming. Mm. Um. So yeah, like I, I want to get past a certain level, you can kind of solve all these cubes, and it's the same kind of initiative applied. Okay. Um. So in terms of your right, let's first firstly talk about the twenty-four hour thing because that's just insane. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. What What made you do it? Yeah, so I mean, it wasn't just like I thought. Oh, I want to not sleep for a day. <laughs> I, like, I, I, <laughs> I kind of like I was approached actually um, on LinkedIn. So guys, get a LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, by by uh, Guinness World Records. So by oh, by, by by the actual the team uh, that I think is a PR manager or someone. Mm. And uh, they spoke to me and said, uh, "We see that you do a lot of stuff with the Rubik's Cube." Uh, we see you're an ambassador for the Rubik's brand. Do you want to set some records for us mm. or with us? And we'll be able to, to help you with that. Um, and I was obviously, you know, very excited by the opportunity. So I said yes instantly. And I went ahead and they, they uh, initially, neither of us had anything in mind of what I was going to set. I just knew I want to set, I want to set a couple more records. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> did you have a number I, in mind in terms of like how high you wanted to do it roughly? Well, because there was a pre-existing world record was of, there? 5, of 5,800 oh, okay. uh, from 2013. So that, again, that, 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 that's why it was attractive to me was because it had been held for so long. Mm. Uh, a ni nine-year-old world record, you know, that, that means like, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to be that. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Like, untouchable for almost a decade. <laughs> like, that's really cool. um, so yeah, 5,800. So I ended up beating it by a fair amount. Mm. Um, but like, actually what happened was in about, I believe it was 20, maybe 2014, 2015, someone called Ro Hessler actually beat the world record, but it wasn't for some reason accepted by Guinness. So he actually got it, he, he got it up to 6,600. Yeah. And so uh, he actually, he like really kind of smashed it. But, yeah. um, but to me, like in, in regards to me beating it, all I needed to beat was 5,800 to have the world record. Mm. Um, but that didn't sit right with me. a lot of Cubers that were watching it. They were like, well, the real, the real world record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 180, <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right, I, I'll smash that too. Uh, well, I didn't smash it. 
I didn't smash it, but I, I was able to 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 nudge, nudge the nudge the world record over that as well, which was obviously very gratifying for me mm. and for the whole community. They're like, yeah. okay, he's he's really got the world record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that 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 was really good. Um, but yeah, the, the, the world record attempt was definitely smoother than I expected. Mm. Um, I did a lot a lot of preparation for it. Mm. <clears throat> um, I'm, what kind I'm of like, prep did like you said, do? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a university student, mm. um, but I didn't drink any alcohol for 50 days. Really? Which wow. Was, uh, okay. Pretty tough. And I was also running every day. Yeah. And I was also eating fairly well, sleeping fairly well. Mm. Essentially getting in the best shape my body had ever been in. Yeah, which yeah, I'm yeah. Say, felt incredible as well. <laughs> like, I'd recommend anyone, like, if you kind of have the time, if you, if you feel like, okay, I want to test my diligence here, um, just do something like that. Like, just see, like, how far I can push my, my own body. Like, mm. see how how like healthy i can get because it makes you feel so good like it's it's not just a phrase it's a it's a thing like healthy body healthy mind is a real yeah. thing i felt so so good going into that attempt apart from obviously the stress of the fact yeah <laughs> but like you can't you can't do much with stress right apart from just you know face just mm. or a bit of face on and uh you know try and smash it but, uh, but yeah yeah so <coughs> so you talked about like so you had no alcohol for 50 days yeah what every day. else sort of yeah so you were running um, yeah right exercise. so like aerobic exercise okay yeah so worth noting so i my uncle mm. is a really really good neuroscientist oh cool uh, he, li he lives in australia yeah, yeah yeah and i spoke to him leading up to the attempt mm. um he's also the chief scientific officer for this brand called a mm. which is the drink that i had through the attempt so i did the whole attempt caffeine free oh, caffeine nice. makes me some people have this certain gene in them i think i believe in one of them um where caffeine just makes you anxious even yeah. a small amount and like, as a person that's not particularly anxious, I like to say, like, I don't want to feel anxious. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, even if it's going to like give you that stimulation, I'd rather just not feel anxious. It's not yeah. good. So I was like, okay, I'll do this caffeine free. Hmm. That might be tough, but it's definitely doable. You know, people can set 24 hours without caffeine. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I did actually, so this brand that my uncle works with called a rapper, hmm. they, it's a, it's a caffeine free nootropic, nootropic oh, drink. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's got like pine bark extract, uh, L-theanine, hmm. like carbon component and green tea. Um, like this kind of berry that's only found in New Zealand, it's neuro berry. It's like essentially like all of that kind of you know this culmination of all those components that kind of yeah. is a really good stimulating drink, and it's very like effective in kind of initiating what we call as cubas, and I think a, a lot of people call it now a flow state. Mm. Um, the kind of where you're lucid, you're in the zone, but you're relaxed. Yeah, uh, like, like you're stimulated but relaxed. It's quite hard to explain, but it's kind of that zone where like you're able to just do you know. 300 solves in a row, but yeah. I think it's five minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, like, like, so in the zone. And I, that really did happen, actually. Mm. That really did happen. Like, that, like, some hours just went, you know, mm. they, they just disappeared, like, and I was just in that zone of, of solving constantly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was really good. So, like, that, so that, the, the presence of that repper mm. really helped me. Um, but, yeah, like, in terms of preparation, I, I didn't go crazy, but, like, I just, like, made sure that I would be in the best health mm. I could be. So, that so I could what advice did your uncle give you? Sorry. Yeah, so he he said don't drink alcohol, and yeah. I already planned on doing that anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's a kind of a poison. Yeah, um, it I'm totally not gonna, is. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not uni. I'm not going to stop drinking it like no. now and then, but like, come on, it's not it's not good for you. So I like that, and then he said just make sure you sleep well. Mm. Um, light is really important with sleep, so running coincided with that really really well as well. So yeah. like, if you get out into natural light as soon as possible after mm. wake, that's going to actually cause you to have a better sleep that night. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which is what's so cool. So like, if you just get in a good rhythm of running, it means you're also going to get in a good rhythm of sleep, essentially. So it's your um, um, circadian rhythm, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. I see yeah. the morning light is what we yeah. would have naturally seen um, exactly. ages ago, yeah, but yeah. yeah, we kind yeah, of lose that now. It's like, it's like in our brain, like mm. it's, it's, it's ingrained in our, in our memory. Like, um, yeah. Did you have a sleep routine at all then? I didn't. I still kind of went about life as usual, but I've always been fairly careful with sleep. Yeah. Um, we're talking like, not like nine hours, like I wasn't going at like, <laughs> I, don't have that enough, I don't have enough time really. No, I, no. But I was doing like kind of seven and a half to eight hours every night. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is like, and that, you mm. know, it, it was good. And then like some nights, it, for example, after I did it, like a big run that day, I'll be like, okay, I, I can probably manage to fit in if I go to bed and don't go on YouTube, you know, yeah, yeah. I'll, be able to get, I'll be able to get like 10 hours sleep. Uh, so I, I kind of like worked around that, but I didn't have very, any specific routine. I mean, maybe I should have, but mm. um you know, 24 hours isn't actually that long. No. You know? Like, staying up for that long, like, people can do that fairly easily. People can do that with a bad diet. And, mm. like, kind of, like, students will do it, you know, having gone out the night before. Yeah, yeah. Had, uh, <laughs> haven't had an oven pizza and two Red Bulls. And yeah. <laughs> so, like, I knew, I knew that I was capable of doing that. Yeah. Um, 
especially like in the state that I, I was ensuring my body was in. So, uh, so kind of, yeah, that, that's, that's how I went about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so in terms of like the competition, so we've, we've obviously talked about like before the competition, you prepare yourself, exercise, sleep, yeah. all, all those sort of factors. Um, how do you, how do you like stay calm during your competitions? So like, so that the world record attempt wasn't like in a competition environment. No. So my, my, my nerves weren't too bad to kind of just go in. No. Like I had the initial, and I, I think it was less nervousness and more kind of adrenaline. Yeah. Like, like, okay, I've got to be doing this 24 hours. You were, you were with loads done. of people as well. Weren't there you? were quite a fair amount of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were Walking, just milling yeah. around and stuff. And you kind of talking a little bit, but then you weren't. I, I and stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and like at one point, like the Guinness World Records team were like in there filming with a huge camera. Really? <laughs> so packed it, was, it got really warm was it like packed. a hotel room or something or? it was was it <laughs> it, was. It, was meant to be, it was meant to be in the guinness world record, record office and yeah and it suddenly wasn't which was uh quite annoying i must say did that throw you um sorry did that throw you where like you, you were planning it on being one place i was also then... told that information about 10 hours before the attempt oh, okay um and then i was not told where i'd be doing it next and i had to sort all of that out wow um, so <laughs> it was a lot of stress and then i also forgot one of the things that I needed for ensuring the whole attempt would be filmed, mm. uh, I left it at my house and had to cycle back and cycle back. To the <laughs> so I ended up getting like six and a half hours sleep before the attempt. I probably, I, I could have got like, I went to bed like with the intent to get, I, I could have got seven hours mm. or seven, no, like seven and a half, eight hours, but I was just nervous. I, I, I'm, I'm normally the kind of guy that just like, like instantly falls asleep. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't in that case. I think I was just a bit nervous. Um, but it was fine. It was fine. It was all good. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of what you're saying about the, like, nerves and dealing with nerves in competition, I would say, I still haven't got got to grips with it yet. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I've been competing for now, you know, seven years. And I must say, I still, I'm, I still haven't quite got used to it. Some events, so, like, for example, like a 4x4, 5x5, or one-handed, um, I actually won't get too nervous at all. No, it's because it's an event that I don't care about. And even though like my ranking is actually pretty good, but I just don't care about it. Whereas when it comes to two by two to three by three, mm. my hands are going to shake, and they're going to shake a lot. And like dexterity is so important for an event like this. Yeah, that it actually is very, very, very debilitating mm. um, for competing. So I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to work on that. Uh, I'm, I plan on trying to actually actively do something about it because it's starting to be annoying. Yeah. Um, but like for now, like it's like what, when would you reckon it is a, a mindset shift or something or? Yeah, I, I think I re it requires a mindset, mm. a, a mindset shift. I think what it comes from, and even though I don't think it in my mind, I must think it. Like the subconscious, I, like subconsciously, yeah. is that everyone's looking at me and I'm I need to do well. Yeah. Um, and I, I, that must be it because also like when I kind of started, mm. I didn't care and I didn't, I didn't care even until I got to about like third in the UK. Okay. And then when I got to about there and this was, this was back in 2017, I, that's when I, that's when the nerves kicked in mm. because now I was like, Oh, so now, now I'm kind of one, one of the people to watch. So I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to perform. and, uh, it's, it, I must say it's quite annoying. Mm. Uh, especially like at continental championships, I don't do well because like, you know, again, that's like a lot of nerves. Um, yeah, yeah. So like, it's uh, all of that just plays a part in it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I really, I, I wish that like I could get to get to grips with nerves more. I'm getting there. Mm. I probably will get there eventually. Um, but yeah, for now, it's still something that I'm having to deal with. Did you uh, say that you don't get nervous during doing the one by one? During the, the two, uh, like the two by two, or two, two by two. I get nervous during two by two. Yeah. Uh, but that's because I got an after record and I really want to okay. be here. Um, but like for something like one handed, yeah, I'm like fourth in the UK for that. Like I'm not like top. No. Um, so I just just kind of do it. And like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, oh, okay, this is fun. Like this is like a fun deviation from like the nervousness that I'm feeling in two by two. Mm. So like, it's uh, yeah. It's I think it, it again. I I think it definitely is. Like yeah. when I think about it like that, it must just be a mindset thing, and it must be me thinking like, oh, I need to perform. Yeah. I wish I, w I wish I didn't, but it's really hard to knock that. You know. It's really hard, hard to get out of that. Have you ever heard of the um, the Michael Phelps story of how he sort of visualizes his races? Yes. And yeah, how, the, yeah. how they um, go, even like every failure. So his like foot slips on the little, he'll literally like just sit there with music on. He plays the same playlist and then he'll visualize every possible outcome of 
what could happen whilst oh, he's in the water. Yeah. So I, I, I definitely have heard that before, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting because yeah, I think that's probably what I should do. <laughs> Just um, literally sit there with music on. So I don't know what, I, what kind I of music you listen to. <laughs> I spend a lot of time. May, I, I think what I should do is yeah, do it. Do it more like him in like a zen, like a more of like a zen mm. state. Like just kind of like listen to music, the like, same music. and a flow state that's sort of thing. Really, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like stuff you're familiar with and just visualize. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I, and that's really good. I just kind of find myself visualizing everything mm. all the time anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, like all the time, like I just yeah, I think that's that's just the way my brain's wired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I visualize the way a lot of stuff is going to go in different ways. Mm. Um, so I mean, like. Yeah, may- maybe if I approached it in a more kind of methodical manner, mm. um, I definitely could. Yeah, I mean, like that. that thank you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Like, man. <laughs> there's definitely something to take on board. Like, yeah, I mean, like again, like I said, like you still don't have to deal with, but uh, but yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, like for some reason as well. This is what's really interesting, though. I do fairly well in like head-to-head finals. So like okay. finals that really matter. Like where, like, where, where, when you're going like just all eyes on you. Yeah. I tend to like or, like in, in like UK Championship finals. I tend to do pretty well mm. myself. Uh, it's the semi finals that I do badly when I'm like I hope I can make the finals and prove that I'm good. Mm. Uh, but once I'm in the finals, I feel like maybe it's because I've already asserted the fact that I'm good enough to be in the finals. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of just just see how it goes. Do you feel like you've but got yeah. that barrier where you you've achieved the level of mm-hmm. the, like the highest level essentially? Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, yeah. You not getting into the final is almost like a, a big L on your part, which I think, yeah. Do you yeah, feel like that pretty... plays into it? Yeah, I think that, that that could probably be it. So maybe, yeah, maybe I'm just past that point where I'm like worried about how people see me. I'm like, okay, well, like, obviously, like, I've got this far. So, mm. like, I must be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, can, uh, I can just go from there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's a lot to think about. I like, I think I probably should give more thought to it. Mm. Because now, like, still, whenever I go to competition, I'm just like, oh, I hope I maybe you don't get as nervous as last time yeah yeah nervous. <laughs> i think know? i think you've from what i've just seen of like on your on online and your presence and stuff i think you've got the right mindset like i definitely think you right. like well, like you said like you were training for your world record which mm-hmm. is probably a lot more than a lot of people would have done and especially like talking to your uncle learning yeah. like what's actually going on inside your brain how sleep uh, uh light exercise all, all of these factors are, are playing into like your actual performance yeah, so yeah. I, I think i think you could yeah oh uh, yeah maybe one day i hope so um <laughs> just changing mindset right mm. uh, but thank you thank you i mean like i i, I do want to go about it the right way like i think eventually i will be able to knock it mm. um but like you know i must admit it's fairly sad but like i'm coming towards the end of like the what like like the cubing kind of thing i think like i probably got another cu- another couple years what do you mean by that um, I because I just think like there's a lot of new generation Cubists that yeah. have, like come out over lockdown, uh, <laughs> and they're just so good. And they have sat there for time. twenty hours a day. Like, just... <laughs> I, I'm one hundred percent going to continue with the Rubik's cube, like mm. for, for as long for the foreseeable future. And like I'm going to I'm going to pursue a career in something like that. But like in terms of like presenting it or like you know doing something like that. But like I don't think I'm going to like be like the best in the UK. No. You know? um, Why not? You know, for, for the foreseeable future. Just the, the time and mm. the, like, well, so we'll see, like, because well, after I finish uni in May, mm. maybe I'll just, like, absolutely just bang out for a bit, <laughs> like, hopefully get back to, to, like, yeah, to, like, the best, maybe, like, or, like, you know, one of the best. Um, but, like, for now, like, it's just, like, I need, it needs to take a back seat, like, mm. again, uni and stuff. Um, but, yeah, like, like, we'll, like, we'll see. It's just, like, Obviously, like I've I've kind of done it now. I, I became the UK champion. That that was like that was my bit, like long term goal. Mm. And like and now now I've got a world record, which is yeah. again long term goal of mine. So like I'm feeling pretty good. And like it's definitely not the end of an era, but it's like I need to consider the fact that like this isn't gonna go on indefinitely. I need yeah. to like try and get try and get to where I where I need to be as soon as possible. Mm. Um, do you, Do you reckon there's a shelf life for cubing and speed cubing and stuff like that? Yeah, and I I I don't know is the answer. Like mm. because. The, what's weird is it's still a fairly young quote unquote sport. Like mm. it's like it started in the eighties, like the cube was invented in the eighties. People people have been solving it fast properly and like doing competitions. Like yeah, like sure there was there was a there was a world championships in like eighty one and stuff like that. I wouldn't <laughs> count that. I I'd say like more like from like the like the, like the, like the mid to two thousands. Mm. Like that's when people that's when people have really been going at it and like doing it properly. When the internet sort of 
exactly like, wider and yeah I, I, when they actually had like forums to talk about it mm. and, uh, for, for people to like you know share algorithms and get faster and stuff like that there, there are like there was there there have been so, there are now so many resources mm. um but like like even like in the last like seven years that i've been cubing like the amount of resources is just like you know it's, <laughs> it's so many now yeah uh, so, so, so it's a lot easier to get fast i think but anyway like i think like what i'm saying is like for people that started in like you know the, the 2000s like they're still good you know yeah and like so like the, the famous person right the the, the, the go the best of all time mm. undisputedly is felix zemdex okay. he's held like over like 150 world records wow. and like it's really weird because we're, we're now we're starting to see him not have world records yeah um he's getting knocked off sort of thing and stuff and... so yeah i mean like i guess but like he was just so how so old is he he's like 26 I believe. okay something like that so like he's not you know six years old he's like six years older than me yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but like he started earlier than me but and like essentially yeah i feel like we yeah we need to be conscientious of the fact that like after a certain point also like your fingers can't turn as fast nice. there's like there's like a lot there's a lot to consider your brain slows down a bit as well doesn't it after exactly <laughs> yeah yeah um, but i like to think not not by 26 like and also felix is still one of the best like mm. what well, like I just like, like after a certain point, there is going to be a time when, you know, like people can't, can no longer like progress. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the main thing. Mm. Like, I, I, I think I think it's, it's just such a cognitive sport. And I think it is down, down to cognition because I was just thinking like, I do a lot of skateboarding and like some skateboarders, like um, this guy called like Ryan Desenzo, like he is getting better somehow when he's like mid to late thirties. Yeah. which is like quite unexpected for skateboarding and like he's like taking all these slams and like still progressing <laughs> i think that's really really cool so like i guess like skateboarding though mm. it's definitely a mental game like in terms of like commitment to stuff and stuff like that but like in terms of just like riding a skateboard doing mm. the trick just in your muscle memory you know like you can always do that it's just about like you know your, your like your physical capability um whereas i think for cuban you need to maintain that cognition mm. which is a bit harder but yeah like uh, yeah, I guess um, that's another conversation. But yeah, like I, I'd say it probably does have a shelf life, unfortunately. Mm. So uh, yeah. are you looking at it, like you said, about maybe doing presenting and stuff like that in sort of in the room yeah, I, I sphere love and stuff? Something like that. I, I'd really love to. Like I've been, in a, I've been a Rubik's ambassador now, mm. like an ambassador for Rubik's brand for like the last three years. And I just love it. Mm. I love producing content for them. Um, I did like actually work experience with them back in 2019. Oh, cool. Um, like like just before I became an ambassador, and like yeah. I really enjoyed like just working in the office and like mm. doing stuff on social media. And like I, I think I would love to what do some work in social media because also like that's 100 percent undisputably the way to go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like TV presenting is really cool, and uh, but I, I hate to say it, it's it's not it's not that's got a shelf life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like cause it, it's it's not gonna go on. For, presenting is gonna go on forever, but TV presenting. You know, like people don't watch just you know regular live TV as much as they used to. Like, so that that BBC news clip, where does he watch it on YouTube? YouTube, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like it's on social media. Like, like when it came out, like I got like a I got a bit of recognition. Mm. You know, when, when it was first shown live, um, which which was great. But then what 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 I'm really thankful for, thankful to them for this. They put it on YouTube. They put it on mm. their YouTube. The clip of me solving, and then. Then, then, then it was semi-viral. Then, then yeah, I yeah. like getting followers and likes and stuff like that from that particular mm. uh, YouTube, you know, post. Which I, I think is really interesting. Uh, I think that means it serves to emphasize that you know I would definitely want to do presenting, but I would have to go down the route of something more social media oriented mm. if I want to do that in the in the future. Um, but yeah, yeah. So you would you want to be like self-employed in terms of doing it as like a content creator and, and YouTube and stuff and podcast i, I think i'd that. actually want to work for rubik's would you okay uh, or, like with rubik's yeah yeah so, like I, I just i've like had such a good relationship with them now mm. for so long that i just really want to continue that and especially when i when i'm no longer at uni like wouldn't that be great like i just i the, I, I can i can you know work with them finally when the world is my oyster when like when i've just I've yeah. done everything and like i've done i'm out of education and i can do what are you I'll studying work. at uni i'm doing um Quite unconventionally, you'd think for Cuba. I'm doing uh, English literature. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just I, I like reading. Yeah. Um, I, and I like I loved it. I loved English at A level, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll just do that. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's what I went with, and I really enjoy it. Mm. Um, I'm probably not going to pursue it, like down like I'm not going to become like, an English mm. teacher, but like, um, I definitely want to. You know, like I, I'm glad that I'm doing it. Mm. Like I think it's 
good for like you know being able to present yourself and um you know and communicate well um and yeah like i just kind of wanted to have a degree yeah 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 <laughs> um just for the, for the sake of having a degree and for the sake of you know experiencing uni i think it kind of um is a good way to kind of mature mm. you know like like i think you know a, a, everyone matures in their own way but i feel like uni is a good good way to kind of elevate that like yeah. i was like okay i was going straight to uni and like I would just go out from London because I used to live in Northampton. I'll go, okay, I'll go. I'm going, going to go into the big smoke and just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm like, I have absolutely zero regrets. Like, I, I love uni. I love, I love the experience. Yeah, um, and just like being in London is so, so good for me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so you read books? Yes. Like avidly? Yeah. Uh, Semi avidly. Like yeah. when, I have, when I have time, like on the tube to work. Mm. Um, what, uh, fiction or non-fiction? Like Sorry? Fiction or non-fiction? Uh, 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 all like kind of fiction yeah. I, I read uh, before the world record attempt i read this non-fiction book that i loved it was called drink question mark and it was about the effects of alcohol Is uh, it? oh cool but like he was, uh, it was uh, it's a david nutt i believe uh, it, like but it, he just made it very very accessible mm. and like not like it didn't feel like an impenetrable non-fiction scientific neuroscience text, yeah you know? like it was like it was like actually you know good and uh and it wasn't also like don't drink it's poison it was just like you know, keep this in mind when you drink. Like this is this is actually what it's doing to your body. Like your brain does just turn into a raisin when you're hungover. Like, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, it was, it was just a bit like that. But yeah, like I I kind of like that book. But no, normally a lot of like just regular kind of novels. Mm -hmm. um, Favorite novel? Uh, oh, uh, the, the 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 novel I find myself rereading the most is the Picture of Dorian Gray, okay. Oscar Wilde. Yeah, yeah. But then like the, my favorite novel in terms of like because I. I've listened to it twice. Yeah. I've read it twice. Yeah. Cover to cover. But it's like such a tough read. It's Ulysses by James Joyce. Mm. It's just like, you know, like it's more of an experiment. It's more of a challenge than yeah. an actual just read. Um, you, you can't just like, you can't Get just like, it. Actually, you know, on the tube. But yeah. like, I, I have, but like, it's tough, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you're actively, you're actively, actively like every single word thinking, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, I, I really like that text. Um, I like a lot of the kind of modernist texts, so like a lot of Virginia Woolf and stuff like that. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, I like that. And I'm probably going to do that for like my dissertation and stuff like that. Mm. Probably. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, if you like the sort of science or more accessible science books, there's a good one called um, The Expectation Effect. Okay. By an cool. author called David Robson, I believe it is. Um, but he, he talks about, he brings together like loads of ideas in terms of how your mindset can influence how you act how you react to certain things so there's one study that he looks at where people with um a peanut allergy are or no it wasn't a peanut allergy it was, it was pollen mm -hmm. and it was basically just mindset so there was this um flowers on the table and mm -hmm. they were fake but they looked really real yeah, and yeah. The woman came in and instantly she's like, oh, sneezing and itching and everything. Oh, and, um, yeah, it's like just all like placebo, essentially. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that, that's so interesting. But it's yeah. placebo with the fact that your mind actually causes your body to have the reaction that yes. it thinks it yeah, should yeah. have. So, yeah, totally. And and there's another thing called nocebo, which is the, the essentially the opposite of placebo. So... Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, you essentially don't take something and then it uh, makes your body believe it. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I remember there was like this thing where like people were told that it was like radiation being like put onto, put onto their, their arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like crashed up and like they had like severe reactions to it. <laughs> like it's crazy no. like how your body can do that. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean like it probably ties into like the competing aspect as mm. well. Like, like what we're talking about, like the fact that I'm like causing myself to do badly by yeah. saying I'm probably going to do badly and like stuff like that. And also like, this is a very weird one, but like you know, like if you're ticklish, mm. and then like for some reason sometimes you're just not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like okay, actually no, I'm not ticklish. Like, yeah, right. And it's like <laughs> super weird. Like you're, you're like you're, you just decide not to be sometimes. Mm. And it's, it probably ties into that. It's all just like kind of the way. Yeah. You're, you, you, like you choose your body to react to it. Mm. Yeah, that's really interesting. And and yeah, if you're working out or you're running or something, sometimes yeah. you can like essentially tell yourself that the weights don't feel as heavy or you feel stronger or yes i always used to do this actually so like even when i, did, when I just started running yeah um when i just started running like we're talking like before i 
got back into it mm. um like during uni before uni when i used to do a few like park runs and stuff mm. when i was doing a like a park run or something the, the way ours always is which, which is where i'm from in northampton it's just like two laps um but like the first lap um big the second lap small mm. but after the first lap i would like start the second lap and i'd obviously be feeling a bit you know mm. worse for wear but i'd always be like wait George, mate, like, this, this is the first lap. So, like, come on, like, you can't yeah. be feeling this bad. You've got another lap to go. Yeah, I just yeah. tell myself that. So, therefore, I'd have to be like, oh, right, yeah, so my body needs to feel better. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. would probably, like, help me a little bit, you know, like, in mindset, just thinking, okay, like, yeah, I, I am feeling better, I guess, because mm. I've got another lap to go. Like, telling yourself about that does actually really help. And I think, yeah, with running, there's a lot of that. It's a massive mental game, especially for, like, particularly long distance. Mm. How, how yeah. sort of long do you run? Um, I, I don't do anything really over, like, kind of, 15k or so i don't okay. do like big long runs i kind of like i've always kind of treated it as a thing to do in the morning to to wake up mm. and to feel good like for the day um so you feel productive after you've done mm. a run and like you start the day like it just feels good um so yeah i've treated it like that but i did recently join like a running society so maybe i'll pursue a bit a bit more running now and then um i, I definitely kind of plan on doing like a half marathon at some point i just haven't had the oh, cool. kind of time um i know i know my body's capable of it but i'd rather mm. kind of train to get to like a good level of half marathon mm. as well um maybe like sub you know 130 beating so world records for half marathon yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good, that'd be good. i mean that, that's another thing on the cards i have in mind like solving me just keeps while well doing like long distance running or something that'd be quite cool, oh, cool. But, um, how would yeah. that work yeah. uh well like it would work in the same way as like you know i recently said the, the most yeah really while skateboarding 500? it'd be like i have like helpers okay with uh with like scrambled cubes mm. Um, and like as soon as I solved the cube, I'd do a straight swap, and I'd mm. have them at different points along the route, yeah. and they'd uh, be doing like so it'd be like most routes you saw while doing a five k or something like that. Mm. But like I've always thought about it, like surely you can just run really, really slowly and solve as many as you can, or like there's, there's, there's probably a limit, right? It probably needs to be like less than thirty minutes or twenty minutes or something. yeah. I don't know. I like because it, it, it's definitely a pre-existing world record that's been like broken a few times. So I, I haven't really listed the regulations of it yet or like, the guidelines. So no, you probably have like, to I, run at a certain like speed, wouldn't you? Or, or get to a certain distance yeah, within a certain amount of time. So slow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is my running like... speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um. So in in terms of say some someone's like who's younger, maybe um, fourteen, fifteen, and. Yeah they kind of don't really know what they want to do um but you're like w w what advice would you give to them so someone who i don't know they feel maybe like a little bit passionate about something or like say for example skateboarding yeah. cubing whatever it is yeah yeah what would you say to them like what advice would you give to them i mean i'd say like just you need to be able to like deal with failure um and like and like and that in, in that kind of anything um, I think it's just a really good life lesson, like, for, like and that applies to to anything. So I mean, like, yeah, like, if you're if you have any passion for anything, you just you you've got you've got to pursue it. But like, I think it's important to know as well, like, you don't need to put everything down to pursue it. Like, some people do that, and that's fine, and that's that's the way some people go about it. But I've always been able to like support my academic studies and like do everything like that and work like part time and stuff like while still like maintaining, you know, what I do. Um, but that could also be the fact that like you know when I was I started when I was thirteen, so like. You know, I had time on my hands, but like, I think anyone can kind of, if they have, a, if they have something they want to pursue, just like spend as much time on it as you can. Just like make it your obsession, um, because it's always something. Even if, even if it feels super like niche or something that like some people might like, oh, like that's not, that's not not relevant to your studies or not like not special. Just mm -hmm. you know, just like you become engaged with it and uh, practice it or like wh whatever it is you're doing, and uh, just m m make sure it's always fun. Like just make 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 sure like. You're not feeling like you're practicing for the sake of practicing or like sometimes it might feel like that but like it's always worth the rewards that you gain from that um so yeah like, i feel like so say someone is feeling like that like um i get it sometimes when i'm doing like a video edit or something and it yeah. it's just it's taking ages and my mind is just like i'm not being able to get into that flow state which i normally can yeah yeah um like wh what would you say to someone who is like maybe going oh, i want to do it but it's just like that. Obviously, that resistance is sitting there going, no, nah, don't do it. Like, and like, like the feeling your past achievements gave you doing it is like, I'd say, very worth it. Um, but like, also just like, yeah, you just, you just, you, you got, you got to think like, okay, like, how, like, think about how, how, the, how this will benefit me in the future if I do this. You know, um, just you, you got to think, think in the long term, um, and just think, yeah, like, it's worth me doing this right now. Hmm. Um, definitely. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, okay. So you're completely self-taught, aren't you? Sorry? You're completely yeah, self-taught. self-taught. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. you wanted to do magic. Um, yeah. But yeah, you found these Rubik's Cubes. You wanted to do a trick where it changed the Rubik's Cube midair after you threw it. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. So, so, right. My, my, I've got a daughter who's nine and she's, oh, okay. I can do the Rubik's Cube in about a minute and a half. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> but it's very much like find a daisy, do the other thing, da, 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 do the bottom layer, yeah. do the, yeah. and that kind of very methodical, really very clunky. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to teach her to do it. And I'm, I'm literally just doing it like you said, of like learning like layer. First layer, second layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Layer. Doing it like yeah. that. Um, so what would you sort of say to someone who wants to be self-taught and maybe go into the cubing speed? Oh, cubing yeah. Stuff? I mean, like, I think it's super easy to get into now. Okay. Um, like, definitely, like, I, I, it's all on YouTube, firstly, is what I'm going to say. Like, it's, yeah. like, it's, all, it's all out there and it's, it's not a trick. Um, it's not a secret, you know, you, you learn it and it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy to learn. Like no. it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not like you just pick it up in, in like a you know, half hour no. how to solve it, but like you can definitely learn it over a couple of days. Mm. Um, like, or like just obviously everyone's got their own learning pace. So if, if, it, if it takes more, more than a couple of days, that's fine. It took me four days to learn. Yeah. It's only um, about like, a week. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly. Like doing it in the evening. Down to <laughs> person. Um, which I like, and also like how much time you commit to it. Cause mm. like when it be four days I was spending the whole day doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, yeah, like finally after the four days I was like, okay, this actually finally makes sense to me. Mm. Um, but like, yeah, like I'd say just, yeah, go on YouTube, look it up. I think the community behind the Roots Cubing is like also what's just absolutely incredible about it. Mm. Like everyone's so supportive. So like when I was doing the 24 hour world records attempt, as I was reaching the old world record of 5,800, the, it, live it, in the live group chat, it was, was Eric Lineback, the guy who held the the, the, current, the then current world records, cheering me on, saying like, "Oh come on, man! Like you got this! Like oh, keep nice. going!" And I just thought like that is just like a, a perfect definition of just what the, mm. what the community is like. Like we're just all very supportive, and like also like like in terms of like national records and stuff like that, it's not like oh yes, I just got a national record, I just beat whoever's first. It's like oh, okay, I, I just got my personal best time happens to be better in the UK, that feels pretty good. You know, like, it's, it's never like that kind of head-to-head, like, aspect. So I think, like, the fact the community is so nice is also what, a reason why you should get into it um, and why you should, like, you know, like, as soon as you can, after you can, like, learn to solve it, just go to a competition. You know, they're, they're, they're fun. They're great. They're very inclusive. Um, and you'll have a great time. But, like, yeah, in terms of just, like, learning it, go on YouTube, look it up, learn the algorithms. Don't be, don't, don't be too, like, too, like, um, you know, overwhelmed by uh, by by all the all the stuff that's around it. Like it really is just four steps. You know, um, you know, cross first layer, second layer, third layer, and yeah, like they're, they're like you have to, you have to learn these algorithms, but they're 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 not hard, and it's just a muscle memory. It's like learning the, these these few little like six seven core piano songs that you're just having your having your memory, and then you'll be able to just apply them, and you'll yeah. be able to learn. And I I think it's just such a great hobby to have, and also it's a great party trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a, you have a party and someone's got a cube there it's scrambled and you're like oh, okay i can do that kids um, love it i find if you can do the rubik's cube and like they, or they've got one they've never been able to do it and then you can just yeah. do it they're like oh my god like what <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly like, they, they think you're some kind of genius and mm. like i it, like you're not <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also like a lot, of, a lot of people think it's very messy when it's not you know mm. you just oh you know um it's just it's just down to like yeah, these, these movements that you've learned and applying them and recognizing when to use them. And that's it. Um, anyone can do it. Like, actually, my, my worst grade in a, uh, GCC was, was in maths. I, I didn't like maths. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that serves to emphasize, you know, you don't need maths. <coughs> um, yeah. How, yeah. How do you think it, like, applies to your sort of wider life, if you know what Right. I mean. that, that's actually what I was, what just left my mind. That's okay. what I was <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Um, yeah, so, like, I think there's not enough research on the cube and what it does, mm. but I can almost certainly say that it's good for spatial awareness and cognitive skills. There, there, there's no way it can't be, you know, you're, you're having to learn these algorithms, get them in your muscle memory. Same way, like surely like the piano is good for you, right? Like mm. learn, learn to play the piano. Like people know like learning that is good for you. It's the same with the Rubik's cube, but if anything, a bit harder because you're having to recognize a very, very specific, you know, very very small you know um if this piece is there then it should be there yeah yeah like i've got to put this piece here and yeah spatial awareness exactly is really important in that aspect of like having to move this particular piece 
to this particular area. Yeah, but then it's like this particular piece to this particular area, but then I'm going to move this piece out of it, which I yeah. have to then get back in. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and like, the whole thing actually comes under this commutative law. Okay. Um, What's if that? You want to, if, you, if you want to bring a matchy aspect into it, like it is fairly commutative, like in that you do A, you do B, you undo A, you undo B, and it would have like done a certain thing on the cube. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so that's a big part of it as well. Like just like these algorithms, they're they're not like useless. Like you're learning this, you're le you're learning something. And I think it's fairly relational to coding and stuff like that. Um, I think by the there's there's de definitely like some kind of transferable skills there. Like I, a lot of my friends that are really good. They they do like computer science at Cambridge or something mm -hmm. like like they're they're they're, they're like they, they know about coding and they know about computing and that kind of stuff. Uh, plus, me don't, but I can see why it'd be transferable. Mm. <coughs> Sorry. That's all right. So so how how is it transferable in your life? Like, have you found any areas where you're like, oh yeah, I, I find this easier or? Um, I think like in terms of like as I briefly mentioned before, was the, the idea of like being able to deal with failure, like mentioned this but like in, in uh, like the, the, the uk championships 2016 i'd been queuing for a year um but i was very very gratified i actually managed to make it to the final of the uk championships which is like a very 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 big thing for me mm. i was super happy but i came last but mm. you know but I, but last last in the final 16th in the uk like you know not awful but still like for a year you know, not, not <laughs> um like i definitely wanted, wanted to wanted to get better, better than that and like yeah, actually, all these videos of like the UK, UK UK Championship Finals, they were all like actually uploaded to YouTube and commented uh, like commentated on mm. by like um like UK, UK Championship like delegates, mm. what we call people that kind of like run the competitions. And they they said like, oh, he'll, he'll be back next year. Don't you worry, like he's gonna he's gonna do better next year. And yeah, like they they, they kind of called it. So like 2017 came third, um, which is yeah, very gratifying. Mm. Um, like the, like I probably could have managed first. Um, kind of, like looking back, like I made a couple of mistakes, but like. Oh, it was my again only my second time in like a head-to-head -head final in front of hundreds of people watching. So like I was like, okay, this this is fine, you know. And then 2018, I was like, okay, I definitely have the capability this year to like to, to win it, to, to take it, to to be the, the UK champion. And then I um didn't even make the final. No. I just like got super nervous in the semi-final, like just again like about these nerves and like thinking like oh like I need to show that I'm capable of like winning this. You know, I need to make, I need to do well in the semi-final, make the final. I didn't even make it. Um, and I must admit, I was really, really saddened by it. I was, I was pretty, pretty just like, I, I, I found, found it pretty tough to, to swallow. Like that's just, you know, but like that, that that's it. Like I, I haven't made it, and like I, I've got to wait another year now, mm. oh, a year to even have a chance of it again. So, did, um, but yeah, did they do nice. it in twenty twenty as well? So sorry. Did, sorry, yeah, you were saying you done it in twenty eighteen, you didn't make it. Yeah, twenty yeah twenty eighteen I didn't make it. Twenty seventeen I came third. Yeah. Twenty eighteen didn't make it. So like coming from third to like not even <laughs> you know making it, making it into the final was like wow okay, um, and then twenty nineteen, actually I started off the first solve with um, a plus two, it was okay. a six point one but it was off by one move which was super sad, um, but it made the time an eight point one two which still was like, quick not a horrible <laughs> time like you know mm. I, I can deal with that like that that could be. You know, like the average could be like, you know, high seven, and that, that'd be okay. So I, I, I got the, I got the six point one, and I was like, ah, oh, damn, like I don't know how, how this is gonna go. But like, I, that, it's still an okay start. Second one, I got like seven point mm -hmm. something. Then like third, I got eleven point four. So I was like, this could go any way right now because yeah. I, I have like all I know is I have like an eight because like the way we formulate averages in competitions is you take away the worst solve and the best solve mm -hmm. and you create a mean of the three that are left so i knew that i had a counting within like the mean i had a counting eight but that's all i knew i don't know three solves four solve was like 7.8 which is okay you know i was like okay this, this is like on track to maybe like it could be like sub eight mm -hmm. you know like less than eight second average but we'll see then the third one I had a 2.5 second pause so i didn't do any moves in 2.5 seconds and i was like this is it like i've lost it like this is so annoying like i've ruined it you know did like did you know that whilst you were doing it yeah yeah like i was like because i was i was doing this i did this so i did a. Uh, so obviously i'm not doing any moves so i did like a rotation twice mm. like this and it just wasn't doing anything no because like, i was like i was kind of looking which algorithm to use and i didn't know which one to use and i was like ah. and then i did it and but did you know I, it took 2.5 seconds yeah, uh, I, at the time, I didn't know it was 2.5. I knew it was no. way too long. <laughs> I knew it was way too long. I was like, oh, I've like, lost it. 
And then I somehow managed. And uh, this was like a pretty cool moment. Like a lot of people, like obviously everyone was watching. They're like, he's on track for maybe winning, but like we don't know. Like all depends on this last solve. Then they see the one five second pause, and they're like, okay, he's lost it. Like <laughs> he's ruined it. He's ruined it. And then somehow I brought it back. Had a fairly lucky end to the solve. Um, and I just got a 7.0 again. Mm. So it, like, it meant that the average time was 7.68, uh, which, mm. won, which won, won, won the UK Championships by about half a second. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was, I was very, very happy with that. I was very, very gratified. And like, I think another thing to mention, like in terms of like dopamine, serotonin, and like, you know, the, those, those, those happy chemicals in the brain, um, they are like the, 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 the more it is released on like the longer it takes for you to get to the point to release it. Mm. So like, obviously like I've been training for six years for this. Yeah. Like it was like, Oh um, yeah. Like four mm. years, a long time, a long, long time. Um, and I was like, okay, like this is, this is it. Like I've actually done it. And like that feeling like that, you know, that euphoria that I got from that, like is unlike anything ever. That I've never got like, I've, and it's just because like I know that I've been practicing for so long mm. that like that that's what caused that euphoria. But like it shows like if I didn't just if I just gave up after 2018 and was like okay that's it like I'm kind of done now, mm. then I wouldn't have got there. No. And I would have never achieved that. I would I would have ne- never got never got that feeling that I still remember so vividly to this day. Um, because actually what happened was like it was a head to head final and after I got I got that I got that I was like okay that's probably one but there were two more competitors to go. Mm. So if, if if either of them got less than a seven point six eight average, then they would have won. Mm. So I needed to you know watch them uh, compete, and I, I was watching very very intensely. And I was like, both of them got to their fourth solve, and by that point, I knew that I'd won. Oh, so nice. uh, and like I, the, the whole like venue was silent, so mm. I needed to do a very very like quiet celebration. But like mm. me and my friends, like my friends just picked me up, and they were like, "Let's go! Like you got it." And uh, yeah, it was like, it was very, very, very good. Yeah. It was, uh, that, that was a good day. But like, yeah, I think that's just like a nice story of like showing that like, you got to like not, you know, give up with something. Yeah. Um, just, just because like, yeah, you might, you might meet failure, but like, it's always worth it for the, the you know, the, 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 the success, mm. you know, the success that you get from it. What, um, so why didn't you give up after 2018? Because I knew that I was still capable of getting UK Championship mm. title. So I was like, I need to get this. Yeah. So I need to keep practicing. And like, I was like, I need, to, I, I also, in my mind, maybe a little bit was like, I need to prove that I'm capable of me, of, of making the final still. Like, <laughs> I can't do it. Um, it's it's not, 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 not like I've got worse. I've, I've got better, you know, mm. like, like, um, but th- that's what, that's what's also quite annoying. Like, I'd obviously got way better since 2017, mm. 2018. Yeah, still didn't make the final that yet. Like, and it's, it's not, not like, not like everyone, everyone else had got way better. Like, it was just, me be doing super badly yeah um like like that like the average i got in the semi-final would have been bad for me back in 20 2017 like it was like so like it, it was just kind of like that it was um but yeah it was it was good i was, I was very very gratified uh, to finally make it um yeah yeah cool um yeah i know we discussed it a little bit earlier but like what sort of are the future plans for you future plans yeah i mean like so my university degree i'm in 30 right now finishes may i'm gonna work a bit and then travel for a bit um because i've like gone straight out of, you know like sick form a levels into uni yeah um so i want to have that time yet that time now to you know um see see the world a bit more like i i've i've, tra- I've tra- tried to travel a fair amount mm. and I'm, I'm going to the world championships the uh rubik's keyboard championships and they're they're in uh, south korea oh cool really really cool so that that's all uh yeah thanks rubik's for that that'll, mm. that'll be great um so I'm like, that's obviously a big, that's a big one that's coming up. Mm. But then like, I, I'm going to travel to like Southeast Asia and do the, I, I know it's fairly basic, but I think it's basic for a reason, you know, going, going to Indonesia post uni, like it's, it's beautiful there. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's pretty cheap as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, so yeah, like I'm going to yeah work for a bit, travel for a bit, and then I'm going to get properly into working mm-hmm. and I'm going to do a lot of work with, uh, with the Rubik's brands. Mm. And that's what I have in mind for now. Um, but I, I'm happy with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, very gratified. And like the, well, obviously the plan is as well to get as many media appearances in as I can, mm. like get more and more in, mm. uh, maybe like go on like, you know, some like other shows or like mm. something like that. And just get some more like experience, like presenting and being on TV mm. or being, you know, online, you know, doing stuff uh, for social media and stuff like that. Just like, just to kind of build up my portfolio, just so I can 
have confidence in uh, working in whatever I want to work in. Post yeah. I definitely yeah. think you've got a really good personal brand. Okay, oh, thank like, you. <laughs> I mean, you, you. Just the way you hold yourself, the way you talk. Uh, like, oh yeah, like I said, like I watched that thing on YouTube uh, from BBC. Um, and... The comments were pretty wholesome, weren't they? Oh, so yeah. I was happy with that. It's, the, it's but from both perspectives of like the presenter and yourself, like it was like a really kind of mutual. Yeah, I mean, like that is to be fair. That's all thanks to her as well. She was an excellent ho like mm. host. Like she, she really managed to like reciprocate my enthusiasm and passion, which I like. You don't often find, and like mm. a lot, a lot of time on like if you go on like a news track because I was on BBC News back in 2018 like yeah. I've done it like a few times and like <clears throat> it's like often it's more like they see this as like oh look at this look at this weird little nerd guy <laughs> so, like, you know uh, oh, we'll, we'll like deviate onto that for a bit like look, yeah. look at this little like two minute bit of him soldering over his cube now, now back now back, back back to the real news yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but like I really liked the way they treated it like a seven minute you know segment mm. for soldering over his cube like I was very, very happy with that. Mm. You know, I was, I was glad she was interested enough to keep it going for that long. And, and even, uh, even like her feeling the cube and seeing that it moves like a lot easier and you, you yeah, yeah, 48 like, magnets like and stuff. Like and she stuff. was just genuinely interested. Mm. She was very hands on with it. So yeah, I mean like, not only like, it's not just thanks to, you know, like the fact I'm, I'm really glad I was able to come across well in it. Um, but very, very, very happy with that. And I got, had good comments on, on, her, on the YouTube video, which I'm happy about, but it's all thanks to her being able to, you know, initiate, you mm. know, that. Um, because she was able to host it well and ask the right questions, good questions. Hmm. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm really happy. And like, obviously, like, I didn't expect it to, no. to cause as much of a kind of recognition hmm. of me as it, as, it, as it did. Because I've been, I've done like a fair amount of TV things before. Like I've done like, it was reference, I did like uh, ITV. Hmm. Uh, new, I did like this morning with Holly and Phil. I did like a few things, but like, that because they posted on YouTube, they they they, they, they thought this this is good enough to post onto YouTube. Yeah, that's that, that, that's what caused it to get big, and I'm just really really thankful to them for, mm. for thinking, all right, this is worth posting so other people can see it. Um, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy about that. Um, just in terms of like, would you ever do? I see you've got a YouTube channel, but would you ever do it like on a as a sort of personality? Potentially, I think like I've always treated my YouTube channel in a very, very monotonous sense. Like, yeah. All I post is just like, I mean, yeah, I assume you've seen it. Yeah. Just it's like, like stuff and, videos yeah. of me solving a competition. It's like, just like my national records or mm. like my, yeah, like just anything like that. And even like, in terms of like, in like instructional videos, I've only done like four or five of them, mm. which I don't know why, because they, they tend to do really well. I just, I just like, I haven't really treated my YouTube seriously enough. Man. But like, maybe like, since it's got a bit more traction, like maybe mm. I should and uh, treat it in a more, influence i think it would give you yeah not too much of an influence otherwise you'll go down that route of selling your soul <laughs> yeah but um i think i think i think you've got a really good personality and i think your content would resonate with people yeah well, I, well, yeah well thank you i mean like maybe it's something i can pursue probably a bit during uni but like probably mm. after this thing i can definitely like kind of move on to and like produce a lot of content um but yeah like things were, like we would have have some excellent cubing channels out there like Jay Pan mm. is what is it, uh, Dylan Wang is the name of the guy that does it um, he, he like I subscribed to him when he had like 200 subscribers and now he has like over a million and like he's like super big and like he's a really really good kind of um, role model for, mm. for cubing. and like in terms of like telling people about like uh, like teach, teaching stuff but also like telling us about like new cubing news and like stuff like that like he's he's kind of got it covered like um, but yeah, no, sure. Like, I, I definitely should uh, probably do some more like stuff. Like vlogging the South Korea thing would be quite cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vlogging. You're right. I should do more of that. I've like, I remember like a, for the European Championships, I started it and then just didn't finish it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like it's definitely something I should probably uh, do. I, I think it will give you more leverage. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. a perspective, like you can say, I've got this many followers. Da 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 da. Yeah. You can demand a higher price for being paid to do things because if you're yeah. incorporating that in your work and more, stuff. More people will see it, exactly. Mm. Yeah, I, I recently met someone that, um, so it's a bit of a tangent, but like, so I met someone that like, they, they just like, they're, they're like they're like a food blogger type thing okay. or like a, like a food influencer. So they just eat out every night and pay nothing because yeah. they as long as they, they take a video of the place they're going to and the food mm. they're eating, they'll always get free food. And I mean, that's like, that's so weird. Like, isn't that, like, isn't that, I mean, it's great, but it's like, that's what that's what like social media has become like mm. like, you don't, like as long as you just kind of give 
give this place like, it's just like networking yeah mm. but it's, it, I, I guess it's just like anyone that's like famous going to a restaurant and they're like they treat them very well i mm. guess it's kind of thing but yeah, it's just pretty cool um but yeah you're right yeah like i should probably work on uh maybe, maybe get getting a larger following at some i point. think you've got the confidence which a lot of people yeah. lack i think like just looking at you on like the rubik's channel where you're just talking and stuff and you're interviewing people oh yeah i, I think yeah, i think yeah. you've got that and i think it's good yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely try and pursue something presenter esque, uh, for sure. Where do you think your confidence came from? Confidence? Ah, uh, I don't know. Actually, I mean, like, I, I, I mean, I'm glad you think I'm confident. Like, I, I mean, like, I, I, I didn't really like uh, secondary that much. I think I, I thrived a lot more at uni. Mm. I liked uni a lot. Um, just like, yeah, I didn't like. I think I, it's not not that I even liked didn't like um, school. I just didn't like Northampton that much. No. <laughs> I, I always wanted to be in London. I was always, like I was already had like a lot of love for London. My 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 sister went to went to uni here, and like also like and she she's a lot older. She's nine years older. And then also like yeah, I think I just, I also I spent a bit of time in London, obviously doing work with Rubik's, like so like um like what the work experience and like stuff like that. I just like I I did a few toy fairs and like a bit of stuff that just like got me involved with like doing big things in London and they always happened to be in London and I was like this is obviously the place to be um so I just that's where I wanted to go and like I I think in terms of confidence in talking about keeping I don't don't, don't really know no. um I think do you feel yeah, like it's because you know, know your like, stuff sorry do you feel like it's because you know about it like you've lived it yeah exactly yeah like I, I exactly yeah I, because I've I, I'm very confident in what I'm talking about because I'm you know I, I am a Cuba and like I've been doing it for so long um, but I, I think also like the thing is like in 2018, it was just after the, 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 UK, the UK championships and like, as you, you now know, I didn't do that well, but like I was asked to go on BBC breakfast cause I, I still did fairly well. I got, I think I got a national record there. Like I, I did fairly well, but like I didn't make the final, but like essentially they, I was asked to go on to BBC breakfast the next morning mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, sure. But like, I, I'd never been on TV, let alone live, live TV, live TV before. I went on and I was under 18, so my mum had to come as well, which is uh, quite sweet. <laughs> um, but like, I'm like going on, like I had absolutely no clue how it would go. Like, mm. like may maybe I would have acted with clues. I like, I had genuinely had no clue. Like, I've always within keeping been fairly confident, but like, I think like at school and stuff, I like, I, w I always like had friends and like, but like, I I don't know. I I guess I wasn't as confident um, until like uni. So I guess like I had no idea how it would go. And I just happened to come to like be fairly confident in the interview, and uh, that's obviously sparked everything. Like, mm. like that that first BBC BBC breakfast interview was what sparked a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. Like, I guess I just I don't don't really particularly know where I came from, but no. I'm glad you think I'm confident. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, especially on the like the the latter one that you did recently. Yeah. Just the, yeah, the way you're communicating, like you articulated it really well. Um, yeah, thanks. I think I think it's it's really important. That's what I do really try to do is make sure cubing seems accessible mm. and seems like palatable for for a non cuber audience. Like I want I want I want people to, people to hear like to not hear algorithm and just leave or like click off the video. <laughs> <laughs> like, the drop it, rate is just like at that like, section. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's just a set of moves, guys. Like it's just like a few moves that you do and it will move one piece from one place to another. Like that's it. Like. I really I want to try and simplify it so someone that's not a keeper can watch me talk about keeping and maybe think oh okay that seems doable mm. like that, 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 that that's that's what I want um that's that's what I want to continue to do mm. but yeah <laughs> cool um oh, I want to say yeah thank you for being on the show and, no thank uh, you thank I mean you. do you feel I, like there's anything that I missed I don't think so we actually yeah we spoke about a lot I'm yeah. glad to say a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you asked some really good questions, so thank you on, on that as well. Thanks, it's good man. to have a, a good a good host. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if people want to find out more about you, where can they go? Uh, yes, I mean, like, there's my YouTube channel, which is just my name, George Scully. Uh, my Instagram is my name, George <laughs> Um Like, that's kind of all I use. Um, so, yeah, like, you can, you can find stuff about me on there. I've also got obviously got like, LinkedIn and stuff. Um, okay. But yeah, and also like my WCA profile. If I get like a national record or anything, you'll see it uh, come up on there um so yeah i mean like just whatever i mean like i also like feel free to watch the bbc news clip um that's kind of got a lot of traction recently so um yeah like is it kind of a referral but like since we, we've been talking about it a little bit in the podcast in the podcast have, have a look at that as well yeah um, i'll link it yeah, like, below as well so okay yeah people can Thank find you. it
yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, but yeah, that's it. That's, that's how you find me. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, yeah, thank you very much. No, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. I really hope you enjoyed that podcast episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. I hope that you got some insights from it and I hope you're able to use them in your own life. I want to say thank you so much for watching or listening to this podcast. If you're on YouTube, please consider subscribing. And if you're on Spotify or Apple Music, please give us a follow as that would help the podcast so much. Thank you for yeah joining in. I really appreciate it. Goodbye. See you in the next episode.